you can see that there's a, a major road going over top of that so underneath they've channelized it but they've also narrowed it down and allowed for some more oxygenation created a little bit of a ripple area back there and then there's a bit of a pool area so it's dropping out sediments it's deeper area where a fish can still live and then oxygenation again as it moves through this ripple area and you can see as you get a little bit deeper on one side of the channel it's going faster flowing over the rocks and moving sediment and then the other side is much slower and it's a little bit shallower so that's how you get your your movement of your creek back and forth because one side is digging down and eroding and the other side is depositing so over time it gradually moves in one direction until it goes too far and then it starts moving back in the other direction so it's, it has this constant back and forth motion and if you don't allow for having that floodplain area where it can move back and forth and reduce its speed and have areas where there's oxygenation and areas where there's dropping out. It's really important to have that to have a healthy stream. In these fast areas, you know, you can see the, the rock is exposed and so you've got your aquatic vertebrates in there and you've got, they're holding on to that rock, they're using that as a, a substrate deeper zones it's dropping down sediments and you probably have things like chronomid midges bloodworms and things like that so it's a little bit less oxygen in those areas but that's it's still food for the different fish that are in here the different aquatic insects a lot of them are filter feeders so it's the, as the water moves by they're they're collecting the the nutrients and the different organisms that move by them so you can hear that's a major road in the background but and so there's obviously going to be impacts and a lot of the vegetation around here I'd say it's probably if you do an evaluation you're getting about 50% native species and about 50% introduced invasive species so that because we're moving into a city you're getting much more impacts having all these exotic species occurring along the shoreline and much more degradation over time. So in this section of the river, you can see where they've done a little bit of engineering on the creek. And they've put a bunch of different rocks along the, the bottom of the creek, creating a bit of a, a natural riffle zone.